was working in, 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 in uh, Kari Alitalo's group until then as a postdoc and now I have my own group. So and I'm trying of course to somehow diversify and to, to establish some own projects and lipedema was one of the things that I became very interested in. So I explored a little bit the possibilities because there is basically very little known scientifically. And um, mm, if you want to start doing research, you have to have somewhere uh, some entry point. And that's at the moment still not very clear how to enter the research. There is nothing really known about, about the molecular underpinnings of this disease. All these treatment options, nobody really knows how helpful they are. And since it might be that there are actually different subtypes, which we know from lymphedema that there are many different subtypes, it might be different even for different patient groups, what helps. So it's, th this is why it would be very good to to start looking really, because once you know the molecules, and in lymphedema it has already progressed to, to a more advanced stage. We know different subtypes which are caused by different mutations in different genes. And now, as you might know, that there are the first attempts to, to, to use uh, some, some therapy which is more causal, not only treating the symptoms, but trying to... It's not yet in the case of lymphedema for those which have the hereditary forms, but for the acquired ones, but you have to start somewhere and there are now some, some of those underway and, and of course everybody is hoping that once there's some, some progress there then it can be expanded to, the, to, the, to, to those patients who have the hereditary forms. But in case of lipedema it seems to be a very slowly progressing disease so it might be that there's more chance to intervene and just to stop it if we would know what it is. There are of course lots of hypotheses whether it's some metabolic uh, lipid metabolism disorder or what's what's nobody really knows or transport lymphatic uh, endothelial cell transport disorder nobody really knows first you identify the gene but it actually doesn't mean much in the beginning this is the very important step and this is what they are now doing in peter mortimer's group and once we have the gene or one gene it's not even sure that it's one it might be many different ones so that's it's can be kind of tricky because there are some diseases which so far never has been have been able to be, be pinpointed to one specific gene but which appear to be a very complex interplay of many things but it might be actually and we hope of course and it looks like this that at least in a subset of the patients there will be actually one gene which is tightly associated and if this is the case then of course we can take the gene and then we can start doing research meaning that we are going to make or what we are trying to do is to, 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 to set up a model, model of this one, how that we can work on because yeah, with patients it's difficult to work on because yeah, that's obvious. I mean, it's, it's, it's very limited what you can do. And that first rule is don't do harm. So this is why we need experimental animals. So it would be good to have a, a disease model like in mouse or something where we could basically introduce the same, same faulty gene into, into a mouse and then see how this mouse looks like. Does it get the same symptoms as the humans do? If, if it does, then this would be a very, very good thing. And then basically we can look what's really going on. For many diseases, you have a spectrum from almost normal to very severely affected. And where do you want to draw the line where you say there the disease starts and that might be even different for different individuals. What is tolerable for one individual in case of pain in case of, 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 of body shape might be not tolerable for another person. And disease is always defined, I guess, based on individual, individually how much is your quality of life affected. So it's very difficult to, to draw somewhere the line and say, here is lipedema and here is not lipedema.